There is also big news from the world of Formula One this afternoon. Craig Slater is alongside me. Good afternoon. What can you tell us? Well, for uh, some months now, we've been waiting to see if an 11th team would be joining the Formula One grid in 2025 or potentially 2026. That's what Andretti Motorsport wanted to do in association with General Motors. Literally in the last few seconds, we have had an announcement from Formula One to explain that they will not... They are not deemed fit to join the grid in commercial terms by the sports commercial rights holder in either of those two seasons. It's quite a lengthy statement, but if I read you very quickly now the conclusion of, of, of this, it says, our assessment process has established that the presence of an 11th team would not on its own provide value to the championship. The most significant way in which a new entrant would bring value is by being competitive. We do not believe that the applicant would be a competitive participant. And this is what I've been gleaning over the past minutes uh, as this is, as, has emerged, that while Formula One, which has conducted a, a thorough investigation with all its commercial stakeholders and partners, sponsors, and that kind of thing, while they respect the Andretti name, while they certainly understand the value of General Motors and what that could potentially bring to the table, to, to the pinnacle of motorsport. They do not think that this team coming in next year with a, with, a, with a customer Renault engine, which is what it would have to be, would see them fighting at anything more than maybe the back of the midfield. So it's a no to Andretti Cadillac, backed by General Motors. However, what I can reveal is that if General Motors follow through with their pledge to develop a Formula One engine for 2028, then that application would be seen in an entirely different light. So it's perhaps more of a not yet rather than a, an absolute no for any point in the future. But this will be very disappointing for Andretti, who have been trying for some years now to to get themselves into Formula One. They even released a picture this week of the wind tunnel model of an F1 car they've been developing. Um, they have recruited somewhere in the region of 120 staff to work within F1. So this is a major setback for them and they will not be on the grid now as they'd hoped to be in 2025 or 2026. Uh, and you said naturally that this will be obviously very disappointing for Andretti and everyone involved. How do you think it will be viewed across the rest of the F1 paddock? I think, well, I think the teams and the fans will be rather split on this. Now, I, I have had time to, to, to just double check with Formula One whether the teams had a, a significant input in Formula One's investigations and assessment of Andretti's fitness. And we should remind everyone at this point that the FIA, which is the sports governing body, motorsports governing body at large, Formula, Formula One's governing body, that's to say uh, the regulator of the sport, did find Andretti fit to compete in all the other areas in terms of sustainability. But it was the, the commercial interest of the sport, was it in the commercial interest that this particular uh, assessment w was taking place? So. F the FIA will have a reaction to this. The fans, I think, would have welcomed uh, Andretti into the sport. There was a keenness to see what they could do, and more cars on the grid in general was seen by most of the surveys we've undertaken here at Sky Sports as a good thing. The teams were very much against it. Uh, almost all of them had come out to say they did not see the value in an 11th team. One or two of them, for example, McLaren, possibly Alpine, who were going to be supplying the engine, were vaguely supportive of it. But I have to stress in, in all of this and in this announcement that Formula One have let it be known to me that they did not consult the teams about this. They have taken this decision for the wider good of the sport. OK, let's get more on this. We can speak now to Sky Sports F1's Martin Brundle. Martin, very good afternoon to you. Thanks for being with us so quickly after this news has broken. I just wanted to paraphrase a little bit of the statement we heard from Craig there. Not enough value and not competitive enough in terms of how they viewed Andretti. Would you agree with that? I've just read the document as you're speaking. It's very comprehensive, as Craig pointed out. As a Formula One fan, as a commentator, I would love there to be an 11th and indeed a 12th team on the grid, not least because drivers like Verstappen, Leclerc, Lando Norris... 
uh, and others, and George Russell at Mercedes, have signed up for a very long time, stay in the same teams. The calendar's fairly mature these days going forward. So it would be quite exciting to see that, but it's much more complex than that. This does put the FIA, absolutely, the regulators, absolutely head-to-head -head with Formula One management and Liberty Media, the, the uh, financial rights holders, because FIA said yes, Formula One have said no to what they often refer to in that document that's just come out as an 11th team rather than necessarily Andretti. And they're quite rightly saying that to, for Andretti as a new team, novice as they call them, to build a brand new car for 2025, and then when the regu regulations change fundamentally for 2026, to start all over again, it's too much of a tall order. They think they won't be competitive. Andretti will no doubt say, well, give us a chance. We're a mighty organisation with a lot of funding. We'll show you what we can do and look at some of the other teams on the grid. So um, this is going to run for a good while. It also, well, a really punchy line in there, says that this would do more for Bra uh, the Andretti brand than it would for Formula One, um, which we'll, uh, you'll read about here and there as well. So, um, But th there's a lot of logical reasons. And, of course, there's the logistics, too, of getting extra team in the pit lane and around the world for what is a... 24 race calendar this year it's not just as easy going, wow yeah let's just put two more cars on the grid you've got to get them on the grid have a garage have a pit lane big enough and so on and so forth so um as i say lots of rationale this is peak f1 we're in here and the teams no doubt will be saying and others that hang on a minute many of us have poured billions to get formula one where it is now into our team and where there's demand all over the world for races Fans, tickets, grandstands are sold out. You can't just come and join our club now when everything's going so well. You're going to have to show us what you can bring to the table. And F1 have clearly said today, you're not bringing enough to make it, uh, let, let us warrant an X team on the grid. Yeah. Martin, you're saying it would cost an awful lot to develop the circuits for an 11th team. Isn't your mate Brad Pitt? Uh, hosting an 11th team <laughs> currently making that movie. Um, I mean, that's what the president of the FIA pointed out when, when that point, very point was mooted. But can the FIA do anything about this now? I mean, you, you said there'll be a reaction, but what can they actually do uh, to make what they want to happen, which is an 11th team, come to pass? Well, this is a bigger picture, really, of a, of a you know, a head-to-head -head now between Formula One and the FIA as to who really is running this show. And I think the commercial rights holders ha have a big sway in that. Of course, they can squeeze another team into the pit lane pretty much everywhere we go quite easily. There's also some hospitality in the pit lane. Um, but teams don't want to share their money out 11 ways instead of 10, and nor do Formula One. So as ever, money is a big part of this as well. But, but you're quite right. Could we get 11 teams in there if we really wanted to? Yes, of course we could. I think I was right in saying that, as Craig said, whilst we were chatting to him, Martin, that there was no consultation with the teams, but this is not a new subject. So, therefore, you would be assuming that the teams have made their feelings clear, whether they were asked or not, you know, way back down the line. Yeah, I, I think it suits everybody for that statement, but the teams made it very clear to any of us who would listen and generally that they don't want somebody else on the grid. They think... Formula One's going just fine the way it is with 20 cars on, on the grid on the start line. Um, and as I say, they don't want to share the pie out and have the complications. And, you know, Red Bull are building a power unit, uh, whereas Formula One is saying, hang on a minute, Andretti wants to come in using a customer engine. But we're going to have six engine manufacturers as of 2026. Um, ma manufacturers like Mercedes have already scooped up three of the 10 teams. So... A lot of these engine manufacturers are only going to have one team, which puts them at a disadvantage. So there are plenty of power units to go round going forward. I don't really see that as a stumbling block. Listen, Martin, we've got Red Bull's junior team on the grid. Uh, RB, we're going to call them this year. We've got Haas, which have parted ways with their boss, Gunter Steiner, who we understood felt they weren't investing enough. Won't most people... Are observers to this think surely Andretti would at least have been more competitive or at least better than, than either of those two outfits? 
I think if Haas were applying now to Formula One as it is in 2024, I don't think they'd get an entry, to be honest, in the way that they operate uh, and the structure of their team, partly in Italy, UK and America. But they're already in the club. That's the key part of it. And they've been part of building the recent success and soaring awareness of, of Formula One. So uh, I don't know, can Andretti try to buy Haas? Is Haas for sale? Are any of the other teams for sale? Because that looks to be now uh, the only way for them onto the grid. But I think we have to take away the emotion of it being called Andretti. Yes, Andretti is an incredible name. Anybody around the world knows of Mario Andretti, former Formula One world champion, of course. And um, But I think you have to take that emotion away and call it Team A, if you like, and really coldly look at how and how they would operate, what can they bring to the table, and how successful might they be? And how do you think that they will take this rejection, Martin, in terms of where they can move with it? Do they go down the court route? I think I'd be surprised if Andretti don't take it very badly and start talking about anti-competitive situations both here in Europe and in the United States. Um, let's wait and see. I have no idea, but I, I don't think they will take this decision um, easily, uh, happily, or lying down. Just one last thought, Martin, and we have sought comment from both Andretti and the FIA about this development, which is breaking right now. It currently costs $200 million as an anti-dilution fee to, to come into F1, even if you're given the position to be a, a new team. By 2028, when there is this olive branch of maybe you can come in then if you build an engine, could it be three times as much? Could it be more? There'll be a new agreement in place by then. And is maybe part of that behind all of this, delaying it? Absolutely. Yeah, so that the joining fee becomes much higher. And as I said before, you know, teams like Red Bull or Mercedes-Benz, Ferrari, for example, there are others, have spent billions and billions to get to this point. They've lost hundreds of millions in some seasons or spent, shall we say, it's a fantastic marketing tool in that respect for them. But um, they'll, they'll be pushing hard to have the bar set much higher to join what is, you know, as I said earlier, this is peak F1 at the moment. Might this be a little bit short-sighted down the road? Because you, you don't know how it's going to go, do you? You don't know how the world's going to go and, and how Formula One's popularity will be five years from now. Could be a completely different story. Um, and they might be uh, holding their arms out looking for new teams. Martin, thank you very much indeed again for being with us so quickly after this news broke. Appreciate it.